Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Z and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some editing tips, especially if you're looking to edit uh, short documentaries like the one that's playing right now. I actually posted it on my YouTube about two weeks ago, so do check it out if you're interested. I'll leave the link in the description as well. But in this video, I just want to share some of the techniques and some of the things that I did to help my editing process of that particular project. It goes without saying that editing is different for different editors, but in this video, I just want to share some of the things that help me in projects like these. So the first thing is organizing your script. What I did is I edited the interview footage Then, using Premiere Pro, I generated the transcript and then I exported it and I opened it in Microsoft Word. And here I started to color the entire script. I used different colors as a way to give me cues of what I'd like to do at a particular point of the script. For example, purple, I knew that this is where I would want to do some motion graphics. Red was for using B-roll, um, either B-roll that I shot or stock footage. Um, this, this was just a way to give me a form of structure because I think with documentary style editing, it can be overwhelming. I mean, this was a very short one. It's just three minutes in terms of the runtime, but it, even those three minutes can be overwhelming. If you'd wanna go a step further, which actually goes to our second point, which is color coding your timeline. You can use colors that you know you can also use in Premiere Pro, which is kind of what I did. So I highlighted again that, you know, purple was for uh, motion graphics. So if we go into Premiere Pro, this is what the final timeline looked like. So if I also just maximize it there, the first video layer, which is V1, is where the talking head was. So you can see this, I mean, it is purple, isn't it? Yes, it's purple. Uh, so I used the purple label just to remind me that I want to do some motion graphics here. And you can see this I did in After Effects, of course, but this is just an example of how, you know, color coding your stuff can also help. But uh, beyond that, I think I've also done uh, tutorials on labels, how you can use labels in Premiere Pro. It just helps you to be able to structure your edit and know what is what really. Of course, you can also use markers, uh, but hey, you use what really works for you. And then the third thing is, separate your editing into different uh, chunks or batches, if you may put it that way. Uh, going back to this Word document, color coding it helps you because you can put aside a day or two just to work on the motion graphics if you already know which motion graphics you want to work on, as opposed to editing in the timeline and then you're like, okay, I want to put motion graphics on this section. So let me go to After Effects and start editing something. And then you come back and then you edit and then you go back and after it can be really overwhelming. So you'd rather just, you know, separate your editing so that you know, okay, today I'm working on motion graphics. Tomorrow I am looking for stock assets. And then the next day I am shooting all the other cutaways. And then the next day I am recording some sound effects or I'm looking for sound effects and all of that, it really helps because then you have separated your project into something that you can tick off um, as you go. Because that's a very important thing, even psychologically, your mind is motivated when you know you've got a structure that's going on and you are, you are going through it. The next thing is build a rough cut first. And I wanna emphasize on rough cut, it needs to be rough. Do not um, worry about a, a polished product. Your first priority should be just getting a structure. Nothing fancy. Don't start animating things that you don't need to. Don't start going into After Effects uh, before. Just, just get a structure going first. Have a rough cut. So I'll give you an example. This part is from the final video. You can see that a lot is happening there. You've got the, the ashes and the background, uh, which are, you know, just emphasizing the point of death and dying. Um, and you've got this graphic, if you may call it, I actually generated this using AI, uh, these lungs. There's a glowing effect that I put in After Effects. And there's also this 
an oil level that's rising within the lungs. So there's a couple of things that are going on here, but I did that way later. So let me show you what I did in one of the first rough cuts. This is one of the first rough cuts. And you can see it's, it's way different. You can see that I also just put this rectangle just here in Premiere Pro. I didn't go to After Effects. And then I just changed the blending mode and I just keyframed so that it could go from top to bottom, just like that, you see. So this was just a rough cut so that I know what I need to do later when I'm perfecting everything. In the rough cut, that's also where you get to see what works and what doesn't what you like and what you don't. And then one of my favorite things about editing a video is use sound design to emphasize the story. I think this is one of the most um, beautiful things that you can do, especially in documentary style editing. This is my rough draft. Uh, you can see there's, an, there's not much going on in the audio layers, but if we go to the final one, you can see that there's quite a bit of um, you know, sound effects at the bottom here. I wanted this clock to just be a cue that shows the, the running out of time. She's talking about uh, when you're giving the baby oil little by little, let me actually play that part. And as you give the oil every day, little by little, little by little. So she says, you know, giving the baby the oil little by little. I just wondered that the time is moving where the lungs are getting worse and worse. Uh, but I eventually thought, you know what, let me actually put this in other areas of the entire video where it's it becomes an emphasis. I also have a, I don't know, a mini montage, if you can call it, of how we constantly see doctors um, or we see nurses that are running with uh, a hospital bed throughout the video because we are again emphasizing how dangerous this is, how dangerous it is to give babies oil. This then became a hook for the entire documentary. So this is something you can also do if the video allows where you just, it's just a reminder. It's a very subtle thing, but psychologically, I think it does something. I used the the sound of how you start a, a gas stove just to also have that montage of the doctors come through. When it goes ta ta ta, all those clips just come in there. Some people boil it and cool it down. If I mute the sound effects, just listen to the difference. For religious reasons. Some people boil it and cool it. It doesn't have the same impact. Reasons. Some people boil it and cool it down. So sound design is really, it's a really beautiful thing that you can do. Use creative ways to display either static images or, you know, things like articles. So for example, this one is a real article that actually exists. Instead of me just putting it there as, uh, you know, how the PDF would look, I, I sort of added a bit of motion. I put it into a 3D uh, workspace and then I also used highlighting effect. This is probably an effect that is, you know, quite well used now in most documentaries, but hey, I used it because it works. Um, and I also, if you notice, even on this one, I tried to make it look like a computer screen. You can see the pixels, or at least the pixels that I, I tried to create um, in, in After Effects. And that was something that was actually quite uh, nice to do. This was the first time where I was doing it. Uh, thanks to a couple of tutorials, I actually think it came out nice. I had an adjustment layer and then I added a grid effect and then I changed the settings there. Um, and then I also added a, uh, a VR digital effect. And that's what gives us this color distortion, which makes it look like, you know, those screens that old those old screens that you know of as for the x-rays that we spoke about earlier i i just actually got them as images let me actually look for those so this is what the the x-rays that i got looked like because at the end of the day i needed to use the actual stuff that um the actual cases that were there um so you can see this one is in black and white but i i felt like you know what back then if you remember x-rays came out on a on a bluish um you know sheet of i don't know paper i don't know what what it's called uh i don't know if they still do that probably do 
but I felt like let me let me put a tint to it so that's what I did I just edited these in Photoshop just put the little tint on them and I used a uh, stock video rather um, at the back there just to symbolize because they usually would take that x-ray and put it on top of a of a table or something that has light just so that you see uh, clearly so that's what this background was kind of mimicking so yeah i just did that you know it's just something that's simple as opposed to just you know putting this on top of the video it doesn't look nice when it's like this i mean it's just yeah if it doesn't add any value then cut it so this this applies to everything it could be the a footage it could be the b-roll it could be the graphics if you see in this rough cut i i wanted to do some animation thing with spoons but i just felt like look it's not working it's not going with with everything of course this was a rough cut but even when i put it in after effects it just wasn't working this was my initial idea of how i wanted the x-ray images to come up but it wasn't working so i cut it so if it's not working if your first initial idea is not working don't die on that hill like just cut things that don't work actually one of the things i've mentioned in my previous videos is if you are editing break up your edit in such a way where uh, when you're done with your first draft just close premiere pro and go to sleep like even if you still feel like you have energy to now finalize everything just switch it off go to sleep rest and then come back the next day because i i'm willing to bet you will have things that you feel like ah actually let me change this you know um because that that reset is important so that your mind can actually release that absolute thinking that you need to do it the way that you envisioned it the first time you know you, you can always change things if it's not working cut it out yeah so those are some of the things that i just wanted to share uh, on how i edited this i know it's not comprehensive and it's not really deep in but please do let me know if there's something that's specific that you feel like i need to do a, a, an in-depth tutorial on i'll be happy to do it it's just a three minute sequence but it honestly was a bit of time to to do if this video was helpful or insightful or if you just want to say hi just 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 leave a comment but apart from that my name is z thank you so much for sticking around until next time cheers